Hello everyone. So in the previous uh, video, we saw how to uh, run Node Red in a Docker container. So basically, what we did is we pulled the Node Red image, yeah, created the container from there, ran it, and we have access to our Node Red desktop here. Um, in this uh, tutorial, we are going to see how we can read uh, Modbus TCP data from Node Red, and um, what we are going to use, basically what I have here is um, in my codices environment here, I'm using the Win v3 uh, PLC. I've created a simple Modbus TCP slave. You can look a little bit here at the properties. So it has uh, 10 holding registers, 10 input registers, 10 calls and 10 discrete inputs. And in my uh, main program unit here, I've created some four buffers and I've mapped each of the register buffer to my buffers here so i can show you the mapping that i have so this is the mapping i've mapped all the registers to my four buffers here so the i r regs buffer maps to the input uh, registers buffer the h r regs maps to the holding registers buffer the coils maps to the uh, calls buffer and then the d inputs maps to the maps to the input other than the discrete inputs uh, register buffer there. So that is the mapping here. If you want to know how to go, the whole process of creating a Modbus TCP slave on a PLC in Codesys, there is a tutorial already on, on this channel, so you can check that out. We are not gonna go into that um, at this moment. Our interest in this uh, video is uh, just to uh, read uh, Modbus TCP slave registers from our node read here. So um, I'll connect. I'll upload this to my uh, PLC. It's already actually uploaded, but I'll just connect to it. And I've now connected to my PLC. Program is already uploaded there. And what I want to do is um, from this node red, so our PLC is our Modbus TCP slave, and we, we want to create some kind of TCP master on this uh, uh, node red, in this node red, and then read some data from the slave and also write some data to the slave um, to use TCP, Modbus TCP uh, communication in Node Red, we shall need one library. And to install uh, that library in Node Red, basically you come to this uh, menu here, you go to settings, and then you go under palette here. So under palette, this is where you install all the variable Node Red libraries. And we are looking for the Node Red contrib Modbus library. So you come here, you search for modules, so you just you can just type Modbus actually, and it should appear here. So this is the library we are looking for. So Node Red Contrib Modbus. You will click install, I've already installed it, so I won't do it again. But just click install, and after it's installed, you just close this here. So after uh, the library is uh, installed, you will be able to see it under your nodes here. So we have common here, we have functions, we have network sequence, and then we have parser, storage, and then a new um, group of uh, nodes will appear here. That is the Modbus here. And you can see it has a couple of nodes there, as you can see. But yeah, after installing it, uh, your nodes should appear here. Now that we have our nodes here, uh, the first uh, action that we're going to do is to try to read some registers from our slave. And for that, we shall use this uh, Modbus read node. So I'll drag that and drop, drop it here in the workspace or in the flow uh, space here. And then we have to configure it uh, a little bit. So double click on the um, node, and there are a few options that we have to set here. First, you can change the name of the node if you want, the display name in other words, but otherwise you can leave it as it is. And we have to configure, the most important configurations we have to do is uh, the server configuration here. So I already have one server configured here, but if you don't have any servers configured, just click on this add new mode bus client and then click on edit here. So when you click on edit, you specify the um, type of uh, Modbus uh, server you want to connect to. So if it's TCP, you click TCP. If it's serial, click serial. This time around, we are, we are working with TCP, so we leave, it, we leave it at TCP there. You will give it a name. So you can name it, uh, I'll, call it I'll call this PLC. Call it whatever you want, PLC is our slave. PLC Modbus, maybe. The address, now this is the address where the um, 
uh, this is the P uh, uh, IP address of the, of the PLC. So this is my PLC here, and I know its address. So I'll just come here and type in the uh, address of the PLC. The port, remember we said uh, we mapped uh, port 502. So, and my Modbus slave here is running on port 502, so I can show you a little bit. So port 502 there, so that is what I specify here. If your um, uh, slave, Modbus slave is running on a different port, you have to do a new mapping because otherwise you won't be able to reach that slave. So if it's running on port 503, again, you have to stop your Docker container, uh, remove it, and then create a new Docker container with a new mapping, including that port where your slave is running. But we've mapped the correct um, port here already, so we don't have to change anything. And then the default here will, uh, TCP type will leave it at default. Um, unit ID for the slave, so it's unit ID one, a timeout, you can leave you cannot leave all these to, to to default so reconnect timeout is um uh, duration for example the um not dread attempts to connect to the server and it's unreachable so what 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 delay do you want to put there or to use in order to before you you try to reconnect to the slave again so that is the configuration here so you can leave that at 2000, 2000 milliseconds in other words two seconds so we try to reconnect every after two seconds and this is the connection timeout basically and then uh, these other ones, we can just leave them as they are. They're not so crucial, but this, this, these are the crucial parts here. The uh, Modbus uh, type here, the host address, the port, slave port uh, as well, and then uh, the unit ID for the slave. And then we just click add here. Then after you've click, clicked add, now the uh, server configuration will appear here. So I have two server configurations here, so I can choose which one I want to, to use at any one given moment. So. I can use uh, that POC mod, mod bus uh, configuration there. And then here, again, um, unit ID one. Now here, this is where now I specify the action that I want to do. If I want to uh, read uh, holding registers, for example, or in input registers, I select the option that I want there. I click the start address. So I want to start from register zero, register index zero. Then I specify the quantity of how, of the register that I want registers that I want to read. So how many registers do I want to read? And I will um, say five, for example, and then the poll rate. Poll rate is how fast the reading uh, happens. So the polling, the slave, will, the master will be polling continuously at this uh, rate that you set here. So this is in um, second cell cell poll uh, every one second, just like that. And um, this is almost done here. So I'll just click done. And now I've configured my uh, Modbus slave master to read uh, input registers from my slave. Then the other thing is, so what do I do with the data that is being read? So I can basically just display the data. And to do that, I'll uh, need a debug node here. So if you want to know information about each node, you just click on the node here. And then you come on this uh, help uh, tab and it, it, it will tell you information about each node, about the inputs, about the outputs and everything. So when you click on this uh, node here, we can scroll down and you can see, see some information we've already seen about how to configure the node. And then it has two outputs. So basically the first output will give you the uh, data array, uh, the data that you've read, the mod bus, uh, response, buffer, and the input message. And then the second output is a Modbus response buffer, data array, and then input message. So almost the same data, but different arrangement. So you can connect to one of these. So I'll just connect to the uh, one down below, just like that. Uh, you can also configure your, um, your debug uh, node the way you want it to be. So you can um, change the name here. So I'll say uh, input, because I'm reading input registers, so I'll say input reg data or response just like that and uh, the output of the um, the node so you can either display just the message or the complete message object so I'll go with this uh, message object and then click done just like that now that everything is ready or all, all you, if you have to do is to deploy um, click deploy here and um, successfully deployed here. If you don't have any errors, you'll, you'll see the message here, successfully deployed. And now uh, for us to see our, our responses uh, from uh, the slave. So if connection is uh, successful and the uh, master is reading data from the slave successfully, 
this uh, icon here should be active. So you can see it's active here. If it's not, then it should, it should show something that is pending there. So meaning that uh, there's no connection. But if it's active, then that means connection has been established and then you, you, you are able now to see uh, data from the slave. So all you have to do is to go to this debug messages window here. We shall uh, remove everything. And you can see that um, we're getting messages basically every, every one second here. And because we are showing the, full, the whole object, the whole uh, message object, or the whole, uh, how do we call it? We said, uh, not here. The whole, yeah, whole complete message object there. It, it, it includes all the information about, um, about the request and response, basically. So you can see here, topic is polling, payload is object, values is an array of five elements there. Then the input is object, whatever, whatever. So all you have to do is to expand here. And when you expand, you can now expand individual elements. So you can see the payload here. And it includes basically the buffer. So the buffer size is 10, as you can see. And that is the data in the buffer. And then the data is what we are mainly interested in. And you can see the data, the five registers that we've read from the slave. And we can compare this with what we have on the slave side. So on the slave side, we have 20, 100, 20, 60, 80. And that should correspond directly to what we have here. So 20, 100, 20, 60, 80. We can modify a little bit here. So I put this to 150 this to 20, this to one, for example, and this to five, and this to seven. And then if we go back to our node desktop, so basically we, we are looking for the latest image or we can actually remove all images and all messages and then we get some new messages. So you can expand here, payload, and then under data array, and you can see we have 151, 25, and, and seven, exactly what we have on the left side. So that means uh, everything is running correctly. Uh, this is for the reading, and we are just reading one uh, register type. We're re reading only input registers. And um, I'll stop this here, and we shall see other modbus operations in other videos. Thank you, and have a nice day.